Hello, I am Sean Skibinski with Intermet Systems. I'm here to show you the IMAT 3150 upper air sounding system and its setup. To set up the IMAT 3150, we need a suitable location. The location must be clear of obstacles to make it easier to launch the weather balloon and clear for receiving of the RF signal from the radio sound. The radio sound operates at 403 megahertz and that requires line of sight. That's the reason we need a clear area for receiving data. Next thing we're going to need is a suitable work area that we could set up. To set up the IMAT 3150, we just need to remove the components from the case. First thing we're going to pull out is the ICOM receiver. Don't really need to do much with it at this point in time, except extend the antenna so that it goes upright. The next thing we're going to pull out is the Bell 202 decoder. We'll just set that off to the side as well. The next thing we pull out is the audio cable. I'm going to take the audio cable and I'm going to plug it in to the input side of the decoder. The last thing we're going to pull out is the USB cable. The USB cable has two different ends. One end that will plug into the computer and the other end that plugs into the decoder. We'll take the decoder plug into it, and then take the other end of the USB cable and plug it into the computer's USB port. You'll notice there's a red light that activates once the decoder is plugged in. In the process of getting ready for the flight, we need to determine which frequency would be the best to use. So we're going to turn on the ICOM receiver with the power button. And we see it's already tuned to 402.025. And also here, here that all we're getting is background static. What I'm going to do is extend the antenna. And now I'm going to search the four frequencies to determine which one's the best, paying attention to the noise that I hear from the receiver and the signal strength indication. One bar here indicates the lowest signal strength possible and the further over to the right that is, the more bars, the stronger the signal. So 402, I hear only substatic and I have a very low signal strength indication. I'm going to use the right knob to check the next frequency, 403. I see no change in the signal strength, and I also do not hear anything. Turning the right knob again to 404, I notice the same condition, low signal strength and just open static. Lastly, I'll check 405, and again, the signal strength is very low, and all I hear is open static. So in this particular case, all four frequencies are available for use. So I could choose whatever frequency suits me the best. Now that we have chosen our frequency that we're going to use, we could prepare the radio sound. First thing we're going to do is remove the radio sound from the bag. On the side of the radio sounds are basic instructions on how to prepare the radio sound. First thing we'll do is open the top flap. And before I go any further, I'm going to tear the probe support tab and fold it back like so. This will get it out of my way for later on. And then I could continue to open the top flap. Next thing we'll open is the inner flap. That will give us access to the temperature and humidity probe. Next, take the temperature humidity probe, straighten it out a little, keeping in mind to not touch the sensors, and extend it at a 45 degree angle from the side of the radio sound. Next, we'll open the door of the radio sound to reveal the inside. 
you'll notice that the switch is in the off position and the battery wire is disconnected. To connect the battery, face the connector so that you could see the two little individual pins. The other side, you cannot see the pins. The other key will be that the red wire is on top and connect it to the battery connector on the main board of the radio sod. Now that the battery is connected, we could turn on the radio sound to the frequency we have chosen. We chose 404 megahertz earlier, so we will go one, two, three clicks down until we reach 404 megahertz. One, two, three. You will notice the radio sound goes through an initialization process before it starts activating. And once it's activated, we will see the lights flash inside. Now that the radio sound is activated, we can close it up and put it in view of GPS satellites. So we'll close the door. We'll close the inner flap. And then close the outer flap. When I do so, I'm going to be careful not to hit the temperature humidity probe. And then I'm going to insert the tabs into the slots on the side of the radio sod. Then I'm going to fold the probe support tab so that it forms our 45 degree angle. Now that the radio sod is activated and ready, we will put it in clear view of the sky. When the radio sound is activated, we will notice that the signal strength goes from nothing to full signal strength. You can also hear the audio from the radio sound being transmitted now. Now that the receiver is almost ready, all we need to do is push the zero AFC button and hold it until the AFC indication appears at the top right of the screen. Now all we need to do is connect to the audio cable. The audio cable plugs into the SP CIV port on the top of the radio. You'll notice that the audio stops playing from the speaker when you plug in the cable. The last thing we need to do then is adjust the audio volume so that it is appropriate for receiving data for the entire flight. I will tune the left knob until I reach 75% volume, which is approximately between the MR indication and the B.